In the senior men's European cross country championships, I witnessed a race that was so exciting that I had to share it with you guys. In this race we had Jakob Ingebrigtsen up against the fastest and best cross country runners at 2022. In this race every country had sent their best athletes to represent them and to try and get the best place possible in the medal charts. The race started off extremely fast as usual, with them running the first 200 meters in again sub 30. Now the race began to slow a little around the 800 meter mark, with only a couple of athletes taking turns at the front. We had Kimeli, we had Yemen Kripper, we had Cipanelli, we had Jakob Ingebrigtsen, we had Mohamed Katir, we had Emil Caress, and I could go on all day with some of the big names in this race, but I bet you can't predict what's about to happen next. Jakob was pushed to the limit, and we're just going to see how that happened. Approaching the one mile mark, things were still pretty strong, but it wasn't strong enough to drop everyone. This is when Yemen Kripa realised that he simply had to push on if he was going to break Jakob Ingebrigtsen. At this point, I thought Jakob had actually been dropped, seeing he was all the way back in 28th place. But at around the 8 minute mark, he realised that Kripa wasn't messing around, so he decided to actually put a surge in and get near the leaders so they couldn't get away from him. Kripper was still leading this race, and I believe this was actually a strong attempt to try and break Jakob Ingebrigtsen, but it didn't work. He was dropping some extremely fast half mile splits, and it was definitely working to string out the rest of the field, however Jakob was always near him. They got to one point in this race where there were only three athletes, we had Kameli Kripper and a German athlete all running together looking like they had just broken away from the field and basically completely dropped Jakob Ingebrigtsen. At around the 10 minute mark Jakob was now in 4th place and had magically put another surge in. I believe that he was actually pacing himself perfectly because at the world champs in 2018 he made a huge mistake of trying to go out with the leaders from the very gun and that's when he realised he burnt out early on. Now, had these athletes like Kripper and Kameli burnt themselves out, and Jakob was now approaching the halfway mark of the race, having actually run the first half very conservative. At this point, he moved to the side and told Kripper to get out of the way. The big boss is here, you're going to have to speed up now if you want to beat me. Kameli is a very experienced runner, and so is Kripper. This was a senior men's race, don't forget, and Jakob is one of the youngest there in this lead group. Just because he's the youngest doesn't mean that he's somehow going to be beaten by them. Another big surprise to me when they reached the halfway mark was that Emil Caress of Great Britain was up there in the lead pack. This was fantastic for me to see, seeing as that is my home country, and I have known Emil for many, many years as he's been racing around the elite circuit. I haven't known him personally, obviously, but I've been following his progress. He's a great runner and in this race I think Jakob was a bit surprised to see him over his left hand shoulder. As they came through for the halfway mark, Emil Kress decided to take the lead. Jakob let him do this while Kripper was struggling. He had made a huge mistake. Mohamed Katir was leading the chase group, however he had no chance. He was really only seen early on in this race and then he was completely dropped. I think he was trying to pace himself, but he realised that that wasn't going to work because they were just going too fast to even catch up with. At this point now, the lead pack was around 4 athletes, with 2 French athletes trying to latch on to the chase group. Another surge was made this time by Emile Caress. I believe this was his chance to run for home, as he was around 10 minutes away from the finish. It did enough to really put damage into the rest of the group, now whittling that group down to only Jakob, Kemeli, and Emil Caress. Kripper had been completely dropped and was paying the price for going out way too hard trying to break Jakob at around the 8 minute mark. Enough was enough. Jakob now took the lead and Kameli was following his every move closely. The race wasn't over for Emil Caress either, as he was trying his hardest to stay as relaxed as possible. It was now a waiting game to see who would make the move next. There was only around a kilometre left in this race, somebody had to go soon, otherwise it was going to come down to a sprint finish, and I think we all know who would win that. Jakob was comfortable waiting for a sprint finish, but what he decided to do next actually surprised me massively. 
He only had these two athletes now to drop and they were all competing for the Senior Men European Champion Gold title. The question is, who would win? Kripa was trying everything to get back on this race at 4th place but it wasn't enough. Before he knew it, Jakob would once again put in some more surges, but they weren't doing enough to fully break Kimeli or Emil Caress until he came to only the last one kilometer. At this point, he put a massive surge in on one of the downhill segments, which allowed him to put around 10 to 20 meters between himself and Emil Caress and Kimeli, who were trying to chase him down for the title. You aren't going to catch Jakob Ingeriksen on a downhill 300 meters, good luck. This is what he did, he stormed to victory, showing everyone who is the big boss of Europe and exactly how strong he is, from distances to 1500 all the way up to 10k cross country races. This was majestic running, and he was allowed to relax and come in with absolute ease. He crowned himself the senior men's European champion over the cross country, beating a field that were pretty impressive. There were a lot of national champions in that field, past European champions, and also one of his recent rivals, Mohamed Katir, who has actually beaten him many times in multiple races. Jakob ran this race to perfection, and I really, really hope that he continues to run cross country in the future. Some athletes that were missing from this race were the Kenyan born athletes who like to represent Turkey, and some other African born athletes who have gone and got visas and citizenships at other countries that don't have very good running teams. In this case, I was still very happy to see Jakob win, but more importantly, I was way more happy to see Emil Caress's fantastic performance. I want to say a massive congratulations to him. Is this the rise of Great British distance running back again? Jakob may actually be considering going up to longer distances now after he was defeated at the World Championship final. Many people have told me that he actually had a bit of an illness and a temperature before that final and that may be the reason why he was beaten by Josh Kerr over the last 100 meters. Josh Kerr has a very good kick and I truly believe that Jakob just timed his race badly. I believe that Jakob could have done a lot more to put himself in a better position to win that 1500m final and I think you'd all agree with me too. But what's in the past is in the past. Jakob is still the king in my opinion and I don't think anyone's coming close to him in the 5 and 10k in Europe. In this case, it's just a question of would he continue to race cross country as the winter is fast approaching. Well, I'll be covering all of that here on this channel, so click subscribe and join me as I cover his races, his training and his latest news. One thing I wanted to point out is since Jakob actually left the team in Gabriksen uh, kind of training under his father's guide, I, uh, I'm really interested to see what type of training his older brother Henrik and Philip have put him on. It seems to me like his training has pretty much stayed the same since he was with his father as the coach, uh, because let's be real here, all the brothers were coached by the father, so the training philosophies and the methods that they've used were training methods that they were using since the age of 6 when they first started training. I truly believe that something happened, I don't know whether they fell out with their father or there was an argument, financial issues, maybe they were arguing over sponsorship deals. The problem is I believe their father only means the best for them and has got them so far and is basically one of the main reasons why they are all so successful at distance running. One other thing I had to point out is the fact that Jakob looked very disappointed over the race and the fast part of that 1500 meters. I think he looked a bit confused that he couldn't keep up with Josh Kerr and that Josh Kerr was actually pulling away from him over the last 50 meters. Sometimes your body just doesn't respond and if you're a runner watching this video you may be able to understand what I'm on about. In a sprint finish your legs are heavy, your lungs are burning and your heart is beating out of control but it's always important to try everything you can to push and give re every ounce of will into that race. This was a fantastic race by Jakob, I think he timed this one to perfection and he used perfect tactics in it. That's not to say that every race Jakob has is perfect, I understand, but Jakob definitely has had some pretty bad tactic races like the 1500 meters. 
In this race, I like the fact that Cripper tried to break him but just couldn't. It made for an exciting watch and also when Emil Caress broke through at around the 3 to 4k mark when he made a very, very dominant move, I think Emil's Caress move was the most dominant and it did the most damage to the field. When Cripper tried to surge, it was far too early on and he didn't really drop anyone. He simply just got swallowed back up by the group and then spat back out the back. When Emil Caress surged, he whittled that lead group down from about 20 athletes to around about 4 to 5. Yep, that was a very impressive race and I just had to cover it. Jakob beat everyone there and they were all professional top level European runners. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching today's video. Drop a like on this video and subscribe if you are new. Also, comment down below your opinions for any future races you would like me to cover. Uh, the Great North Run is coming up very soon. That will be Mofra's last ever race. We've got the Berlin Marathon coming up soon in under a month and a lot of other big races. But if I've missed any or you think I don't know about them, then feel free to email me or comment them down below in the comment section and I'll get straight to them. Anyway, you guys, hope you're doing well and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.